Here I'd like to talk about standard decoders and uh, to start we have this example of a 2 to 4 uh, standard decoder. Uh, standard decoders also uh, come in uh, 3 to 8, uh, 4 to 16, you know, 5, 32, uh, and so on. Um, we'll talk about some of these, but with standard decoders, if um, if you understand how one of these uh, work uh, conceptually, the way these other work are the same. So we'll go over uh, several different examples of these uh, standard decoders, starting with a two to four decoder. So in this image from Dr. Mealy's book, there's uh, this schematic symbol of a standard decoder that's a two to four, uh, along with this one here. The only difference between these two is here these two uh, inputs that are called select inputs are shown as a 2-bit bundle or 2-bit bus and uh, the outputs here uh, the four outputs uh, as you can see are shown as a 4-bit bus in this this symbol so standard decoders have um, uh, 2 to 4 standard decoders have two inputs and as you can see four outputs uh, 3 to 8 have 3 inputs, 8 outputs, 4 to 16 have 4 inputs, and uh, 16 outputs. And the outputs are labeled S because they stand for select. That with these inputs, whatever binary information we have at these inputs, it's going to select which one of these outputs is activated. And with this particular standard decoder, um, an output is activated when it's equal to 1. And over here on the left, this shows the logic circuitry that makes up a 2 to 4 uh, standard decoder. And up here at the top, I've drawn uh, the truth table for the standard decoder to show the relationship between the outputs and the select inputs. So as you can see, if there's a binary 0 at the select uh, inputs, we take S0 as the least significant bit of the binary count at the select uh, input. Uh, well, you can see that output F0 will be 1 and all the other outputs will be 0. If we have a binary 1 at the select input, well then F1 output is a 1, all the other outputs are 0. And if we have a binary 2, F2 is a 1, all the other outputs are 0. And if we have a binary 3, well then F3 output is a 1 and all the other outputs are 0. And if you go through, you can prove this truth table uh, with this logic circuit. I mean, we won't, we won't go through all the rows because I think you'll get the idea if you just see uh, one of these rows. So, for example, you know, this first row, the top row, when S0 is 0 and S1 is 0, well, that's going to put two ones at the input of this top GAN gate where F1 F0 uh, is its output. So, as you know, with two ones at the input of a two input AND gate, you're going to get a one out. But then if you look at these other AND gate inputs, you'll see that each of these um, three other AND gates will have at least one zero at its input, making its output zero. So see right here, S0, um, let's see if we follow this down, S0 goes directly to this input here. So that's going to make this zero, right? Because it only takes one zero, as you know, at the input of an AND gate to uh, make the output zero. And then um, this AND gate, S1, goes directly to it. So that will make this input 0, which will make its output 0. And then this bottom AND gate, well, both inputs will be 0, because S0 and S1 go directly uh, to those inputs. And that makes F3 equal to 0. So if you were to go through for each of the rows and, and just go through the analysis like we just did for the top row, you would find that we get this truth table. Now, you can have a case where you have a standard decoder where the outputs are inverted. So if you have inverted outputs, you'll see little bubbles like this, which would mean you would have uh, NAND gates here instead of AND gates. You can also put a little bubble here. And the only difference when you have inverted outputs on your standard decoder is now for the output that's selected by the select inputs, uh, that output would be 0, and all the rest of the outputs would be 1. So if you have inverted outputs on your standard decoder, 
your truth table is going to just be the inverse. Okay, the outputs are just going to be the inverse of what we had for the previous case. Okay, so that's uh, how standard decoders work. Now, the only difference when you have a 3 to 8 is that you'd have three select lines and uh, eight outputs. You know, 4 to 16, you'd have four select lines and 16 outputs. And again, it's just going to be one output that's activated. You know, one output is going to have either one with all the other outputs equal to zero, or if it's got the inverters, one output's going to have a zero, and all the rest of the outputs would be one in that case. So let's see a couple of examples. Um, these are from Dr. Mealy's book. Um, in this, these examples here uh, not only uh, give us some practice with how standard decoders work, but also some more practice with timing diagrams. Now, I think this is the first time we've seen this in the class, where in a timing diagram, there's this notation 0x. All that is is um, telling you that what follows is an hexadecimal. Okay, base 16. So this is telling us that the select line is 3 hex, uh, here 1 hex, 1 hex, 2 hex, 0 hex, and so on. So, um, as you know, you can rep represent a hex number as binary and, and vice versa. So, uh, 3 hex is just 1, 1 in a binary. So that just means that we're selecting F3. Now, again, in this notation here, it's just showing our select inputs as a bus and our F output as a bus. But, you know, this is just shorthand for two select lines, S0, S1. And this is just shorthand for four outputs, F3, F2, F1, F0. So, um, as we talked previously, if we have two ones on our select uh, line, that means our output uh, just F3 is going to be 1, since we don't have any inversion at the output here, right? And all the other outputs are going to be 0. So my output is 1, 0, 0, 0, because I take F0 as the least significant bit of my output, just like I take S0 as my least significant of my select input. Therefore, F3 is going to be my most significant bit. So 1, 0, 0, 0 in binary would be, um, in hexadecimal, an 8. So we're going to show that the output is in uh, hex and it's equal to 8. Okay. And in a timing diagram, each time you have a change in input, you've got to reevaluate re your output. So now we have a select input of uh, a binary 1. So that means just output F1 will be equal to a 1. So we'll have an output of 0, 0, 1, 0, and in hex, that's just 2. So we show that like this, and it's going to stay a 2, right, because the select line stays at 1, so it will just stay a 2 for that time. Okay, and now during this time, the select line changes to a binary 2, so that means just output F2 will be a 1. So here's our outputs for when the select line is a 2, and uh, that's a 4 in hex. Okay, and I'll leave it up to you to do the rest, but I think that's um, uh, a way to get you started. So now let's look at this uh, example down here. Now this is a typo in Dr. Mealy's book. This should actually be 3 to 8. Okay, here's a 3 to 8 decoder. So again, this notation here is just telling us we have three select lines, S0, S1, S2. And here we've got 
eight outputs. So we've got F7, F6, F5. Uh, actually, let's draw them over here. We got F7, F6, F5, F4, F3, oops, F2, F1, F0. Okay, so during um, this time of the timing diagram, our select line is a 6, right? So that means just output F6 will be a 1. Again, we don't have any inversion here. So whatever output gets selected, it's going to be 1. And the rest of our bits are going to be 0. So again, we're going to show the output value in hex. And as we talked about earlier in the class, uh, when you have a binary number, you can quickly convert to hex by grouping that binary number in groups of four and then writing the hexadecimal character for each group of four. So you see this would be our least significant hex digit zero and this would be our most significant hex um, character which would be a four. Right, so you see in hex the output f would be four zero. Okay, then during this time here, only F7 would be a 1, because our select line is a, oops, actually we wouldn't have a 0 there, would we, because we only have 3 bits for our select line. So it'd just be 1, 1 with 0 here, and 1, 1, 1 here. So our output would just look like this. So again, the least significant character of the hex would be 0. The most significant would be an 8. So we would write this as a hex 8, 0. Okay, we'll do one more, and I, and I think um, you'll get the idea here where you can finish it, the rest of it yourself. Um, if our select line is a 3, well, only F3 is a 1, right? All the other outputs are 0. So we're going to have a hex output of 0, 4. So this would be hex 0, 4. Alright, and it's the same idea for the rest of this uh, uh, rest of this timing diagram. Okay, a couple more examples from Dr. Mealy's book. Uh, here's a case of a 4 to 16. Again, there's a typo here. This is a 4 to 16 decoder. So it's the same idea. It's just, you know, you've got four select inputs now, and you have 16 um, outputs. So here, the third output, F3, would be a 1. Again, we don't have any inversion, so whatever output selected is going to be a 1. So only F3 would equal a 1. So in hex, this output would be 0, 0, 0, 4. Right? Because only F3 would be a 1, and all the other 15 outputs are going to be 0. So your first 12 um, outputs are all 0. It's just the first bit of that last 4-bit grouping that would be a 1. Okay, here, uh, output F8 is a 1, so that would give us, let's see, we'd have uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, right, that would be F3 right there, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, that would be F7, right because remember you start with f0 so only f8 would be a 1 then we'd have the rest of the zeros here so that means our hex would be 0 1 0 0
okay and again it's the it's the same idea for uh, the rest of the timing diagram that you see here and then lastly um, this last example uh, this just shows the inputs and outputs now uh, not in the bus notation but just as you can see uh, drawing out uh, the number of inputs and outputs more explicitly and this is back to a 2 to 4 decoder and in this problem you're actually going the other way you're given what the outputs are and you want to get what the select lines would be in that case so here during this time oops not a very straight line see if I can do a little bit better with that um, all right, a little bit better uh, you can see during this time the only output uh, or the output that's selected is F3 again no inversion at the output so only one of the outputs is a 1 at any given time and since F3 is the one uh, the output that's uh, activated well that means the select line must equal 3 so both S1 and S0 would be a 1 okay during that time okay then we have a change in output during this time here okay where now F1 is selected so that means your select line has to be a binary 1 so S1 would go to a 0 and S1 would stay a 1 okay and then during this time here okay um, F2 is selected, so we have a binary 2 at the select line, so that means S1 would be a 1 and S0 would be a 0. And again, it's the same idea for uh, the rest of this timing diagram.